song. There's this song. I, it just came to my mind now. Um, it, I think it was done by Six Foot Plus. While, while I was still in secondary school, there was this morning, uh, the songs that they were playing, uh, it was more like, I'm with you, you chop my money, go. I don't know if any of you can actually remember that song. Very interesting song. I actually don't know why I actually loved that song so much at the time. But I'm thinking of the CEO evaluation process. And you might be wondering, what has I'm with you, you chop my money, go, got to do with all of this? Well, I'll share a little experience with you. I had the opportunity of um, being one of the recruiters for a very topmost company in um, Abuja. And... We were recruiting for the position of the chief executive officer. We met several individuals, but one person, two people stood out for me, or let's say three stood out for me. But the one I'll be talking about today is um, a guy, he came in, he had the most verbose CV, I think almost about eight pages, highly read this course. In fact, it's like he, he's waiting for every other course that is out there to take. He has taken a lot of courses on different aspects of business, management, regulation, compliance. Like his CV was really intimidating. Then we asked him the question, why are you leaving where you are to come and work with this particular company? He now said he's leaving because of the pay. I said, just the pay, is that, is that all that really matters to you? He now said, ah, that the pay is very important for him or that. Where he is, like he used to take home about 1.2 uh, million. That he knows that with this company, based on the product that the company in, uh, intends to engage in, that he will be taking home 1.8 million per month. And we're like, dude, this is a startup. Oh. Like it's a startup company. You cannot just be talking about 1.8 million. We haven't even gone through the interview process and he has already told us how much he's interested in. Then we look at his entire CV, we look at his experience, but he doesn't look like somebody who earns even 200,000 Naira in a month, with all due respect, because there are, there are ways to physiologically and check. Somebody who is any 1.8 million a month, at least his skin, you, you can almost see the pores inside his skin because everything will be sharp, clean. The shirt must be like sparkling. His suit must be outstanding. His shoe must not be, you know, going towards the south, you know, in terms of the soul, you know, the soul composition and all that. But everything about that guy seemed so right yet it also seemed so wrong. So today we'll be talking about the CEO review process. You know, when you're rising in an organization, you are not the chief executive, of course. You're rising, you go through reviews from your team lead. After the team lead, maybe your operations manager comes, he's also reviewing you. After the operation manager comes, uh, the, G the GM also reviews you. Like, you, you enjoy the benefit of a review process from different, different people within the uh, organization. Then a point now comes where you are now the CEO. Who reviews you? Who reviews the CEO? Who reviews the CEO? Who subjects the CEO to a certain level of review process? A review process that is definitely important because of where the company is actually headed to. Who reviews the chief executive officer? Is it the board that reviews the CEO? Is it the chairman that reviews the CEO? If it's the board, how does the board even review the CEO? Is it during board meetings that those reviews are actually carried out? Is the chairman always around within the company checking for, you know, trying to monitor CEO footsteps? Think about it. Who reviews the chief executive officer of every company? And how is that review conducted? So I just want to say one or two things before I delve into uh, a, a certain set of structured conversation that we'll be having there from. Uh, and um, if you haven't listened to uh, the comment, the, sorry, the video on um, six questions every CEO must answer, please do well to go back to the playlist and watch that video. It's going to bless you. Uh, it's going to inform you. It's going to educate you. And it's going to keep you on your feet if you are a chief executive officer. So you have a CEO call for a CEO party. And the board members are there, like the board guys, they are trying to find out information, you know, about this chief executive officer. Before anybody even tries to, maybe the board, they are moving around. Before you know it, all the staff, the CEO is giving staff members eye contact, you know, things like that. People are not necessarily free to be able to talk about certain things because the board is interested. If we cannot review this CEO within board meetings, at least during dinner parties, during, during gala events and all that, people should be able to talk freely. 
when you have a company where there is no designated means for having a CEO come under scrutiny, if the CEO is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, if he's that kind of individual, if he's trying to play God in everything, that means the reality is that the board is not actually in charge. They don't have enough information to subject the CEO to certain reviews. So what do intelligent boards actually do? They have a way of engaging meetings with other management staff where they actually ask questions uh, within a system that protects the identity who or of whoever is divulging any information and all that. Uh, those meetings, those meetings hold. If, for example, uh, is a CEO of a chain, a chain of stores, let's say um, like PC World now in the UK, a chain of stores, like TK Maxx now, a chain of stores, like Dorothy Perkins, a chain of stores, like um, ShopRite, a chain of stores. Um, what other chain of stores can I remember? Um, like Next, I don't know if they have a chain of stores anyways, but let's say like Next in Abuja, like a lot of shops, a lot of, uh, like P um, HP, HP, they have a chain of stores, they also have distributors. So if, if you are the board of that kind of a company, you can, through the compensation of the company, dedicate certain times, a, a certain committee can actually be set up that can visit the operational um, aspects of the business, like uh, the stores of the business. There's a way you walk into a store that should be organized. You can talk to the manager, you can talk to the staff, you can even talk to the security. You can find out information as to what is going on rightly or what is going on wrongly within that uh, company. If you, if you are that kind of board that all you do is to wait for board meetings and you think you can actually understand any CEO, you are totally wrong. You need to involve yourself in, not in the day to day, but you need to engage with people who are actually delivering on the strategy of that particular company on a day to day basis. Four times a year, six times a year, not a bad idea, importantly so, necessary to do so that you can understand the mindset of the CEO. So that's very key, that's very important. And when boards also begin to think that, like in the interview, you know, you, 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 don't, you don't give the impression to um, a CEO that it's all about the money. Because money would fail. You can, you can empower a CEO with so much money, but he's not delivering. The funds are there, the compensation package is there, all the miscellaneous spend expenses are there, security votes is there, a lot of things are there, running, day-to-day uh, -day running costs there, you know, different, different, different line charges that the, uh, the CEO could engage to be able to amass some level of money. All those things are there, but he's not still delivering. So when somebody tells me that, okay, this CEO is earning maybe uh, 5 million Naira a month, I cannot equate that to the ability of the CEO to deliver. Even though the pressure on somebody collecting maybe 10 million every month, there's a certain expectation from that individual to deliver on certain key metrics. So to dive straight in, what are some of the ways through which a board can actually review the activities of a CEO? How, how do you review his activities? Number one is leadership. How do you check out how a CEO is leading? It's important that when you hear that, ah, the CEO, maybe there's a staff meeting. The board should be able to get into that staff meeting and get lost, not be noticeable, and see how staff are actually engaging. Is it an open door policy? Are staff free to really say their mind? Or when issues are boiling, people just keep quiet and they're like, okay, well, let's see how this is going to work out. Let's see how, let's see what's going to happen. Is that the kind of environment that you want a company to survive in and deliver results at the same time? The answer is no. So it's also very important that you check the leadership style of the individual. Is he somebody who is abusive? Is he an abusive person? Is he someone that shouts and screams on people? Like when you're sleeping at night, you are dreaming of the CEO wielding a very sharp cane or cutlass wanting to hit at you or cut you or something. Like, is, is that the kind of environment, you know, uh, within the company? Then two, you can also measure a CEO through the strategic framework and direction that the CEO has actually put in place in terms of your own duty as a board to review strategy of the CEO. I'm not saying that it's your job to now tell the CEO what to do. You are not trying to control him, but you are trying to watch him. You are trying to ensure that the, the strategic goals of the company are things that he's actually focused on delivering on. So one, leadership, two, strategy, then three, people development. Is it a CEO that is given to training? In fact, I once heard a story 
of an amazing CEO. He delivered results at his level, but he did not, he did not engage with his people. He's a CEO that if he wants to recruit, for example, he doesn't recruit high flyers or smart people. He doesn't recruit what? High flyers or smart people. He's very comfortable recruiting people that he's better than because he has, he has his own self-esteem issues. You know, you, you can imagine that kind of a chief executive. He wants to be the only person in the room that has a good idea. Forgetting that it's teamwork that makes the dream to actually work. And every, every team is as strong as its weakest link. So if you have a CEO that is not giving to people development, you need to check him on that particular um, on that particular metric. You need to understand, does this person believe that his staff can actually deliver? Is he investing in his people? Is he training them? Is he communicating with them? You know, so people, people management, people development, very important, very key. Then also operational metrics. You have to put, you have to have like a business operations. I'm not talking of a business operations manual that people never read. Really no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in discharging the functions of that particular company, depending on the kind of company. You have to see that, okay, the operations of this company is actually moving smoothly. Of course, that responsibility should be on the shoulders of whoever the COO is, but notwithstanding the fact of that particular responsibility to the COO, you have a certain level of responsibility that the CEO should be answerable for because it's his team at the end of the day and he's the leader of that team. So if the CEO is not getting certain things right, it's the CEO's job to ensure that the CEO is actually doing what is needed of him and what is expected of him to ensure that operationally speaking, the CEO is having a high mark in terms of the operational metrics of that particular company. Imagine a company like uh, maybe ShopRite, for example. You know, you, you walk into ShopRite and everything is everything looks very haphazard, which is not the case. ShopRite seems to be very organized in terms of from the till management to the uh, customer service to the uh, sales rep, you know, to the manager, to the security. Everything is organized within that particular framework. If you had walked in there and you found a lot of disorganized stuff, it only tells you so much about who the chief executive officer is because he should be able to transmit downward his own personal values. Beyond the, the, beyond the business values, the personal values of the CEO is something that you should be able to touch or feel by interfacing with the staff of that particular company. You should be able to touch or feel the impact of the CEO. You should be able to. If you're in a company where things just happen left, right, center, nobody really cares and all that, you know, you don't expect you don't expect anything useful from that kind of an organization. Even if you are making customer complaints and all that, if you like go on Twitter, go and be blasting a lot of stuff, nobody is even going to answer you at the end of the day. So another metric by which the board can use to measure the impact, the responsiveness of a CEO is true stakeholder engagement, stakeholder relationship. What is the relationship between the CEO and stakeholders? In fact, going back to point number three or four, as the case may be, that had to do with people management. Um, I once heard of a CEO who was about to make a very strategic decision. They have invited the RICS analyst guys, the accountants, and even lawyers on that team to brainstorm. And the, the entire professional team, they had a way they felt if the company went in that direction, they were going to achieve their objective. But because the CEO was a heavy person, Mr. No is all, how, why do you invite people, spend so much money at the end of the day, you don't take the advice because you are the boss. The bo in fact, the, the box starts and stops on your table. What, what exactly does that mean when you are not referencing professional advice? At the end of the day, he moved ahead, made that decision, everything crumbled. So it is also with stakeholder engagement and all that. You're an oil company, for example, you have to interface with the community. You are a power generating company, you have to interface with the, co uh, with the community. You are an agriculture based company, you have to interface with the king, the community, the farmers, the suppliers people that will provide uh, vigilante services, security for the company and all that. There's a whole lot of interface going on. So if there are issues within the value chain of the delivery process of that company, it only means that certain stakeholders might have been sidelined along the path. Who sidelined them? Is it the security guard? Is it the customer service? Or is it the CEO? So it's very key, it's very important to have much of these metrics in place for you to be able to review the activities of the CEO real time, 
real-time review. Real-time review so that you are not you are not basing all your assumptions on a face meeting. Because when the CEO shows up, you know, his job he ensures that everybody in the board meeting, everybody is okay. People are relaxed, hotel booking, chauffeur driven, you know, airline, this, you know, things like that. So you already very have a good disposition towards the individual. Notwithstanding that he could actually be a very abusive CEO who overcompensates his staff at the expense of abusing them. It's just like you pay somebody so much money you send them on foreign trips on different things but like you are a lion in the organization like you are a total you are a total ferocious being you understand that kind of an environment people are still working out. they are working out of fear fear of you on the one hand and fear of ah, losing this job if i talk now all these things that ceo is making to happen they will not be happening you know so you must have a whistleblower policy in fact that that takes me to that you must have a whistleblower policy that protects the individuals, the staff, the uh, consultants, whoever is actually the stakeholders, whoever is working with that particular company, so as to put the CEO in check. Because sometimes when you leave power unchecked, it, it becomes power on rampage. When you leave power unchecked, it becomes power on rampage, rampaging and ravaging everywhere and all of that. So when next you look at the chief executive officer as a board member, it is your responsibility. It is your responsibility to save that organization for the interest of the shareholders and to ensure that every CEO is being checked on, on a known metrics, on a known metrics. I've mentioned five of them, leadership, strategy, people management. I also mentioned a stakeholder relationship and one other one. Uh, I'm sure when you listen, you can actually find out the five of them. It's very key. It's very important. And um, to every CEO out there, keep grinding. It's a tough job. It's a 